Well, good evening, everybody. It's your old pal, John, SouthJerseyBeerScene.com. And I got some guests here tonight. But before we start, I just want to talk about a few things. So you know, last night I put a post up about, you know, Governor Murphy and the no brewery delivery and all that. Look, I stand behind what I said. But really, in the end, does it really matter at this point? I mean, breweries have been under fire since they started. And I assume that it'll continue until there's some sort of legislation or an executive that wants to get involved to stop the pettiness going on. My whole point with the post last night wasn't that they're picking on the breweries. My point was that in the middle of this crazy crisis, you know, somebody got near the governor and he, uh, of the office, maybe not the governor, and uh, got upset enough about something that the government stopped what he was doing to do whatever they did to stop the brewery deliveries. It had nothing to do with being picked on had to do with priorities and pandering. That's just my take on it. I have no inside information. I've been accused of simplifying the matter or whatever, but optics are optics. It's what I see. I think it's what a lot of other people see out there, that there's plenty of other people doing things that they're not supposed to do. And, I, and the breweries were allowed to do this at the time that they did it. It's just, my point is, look, if this has somebody so important that can get into the governor's office's ear to stop this, then, Come on, man. I mean, it's 140 licenses across the state really damaging everything that's going on here. I'm going to get off my soapbox, but positivity. Look, they can't bring it to you. Go get it from them. They're all still open for business. Very few are closed right now. And I know that they're working on some back channel stuff to try and figure out a common solution for this. But as of now, you can su still support your breweries. You're just going to have to get in your car and go get it. Make the calls. Uh, a lot of people are ordering online. But we need to support just not uh, breweries. We need to support all business right now. People are hurting. You know, tons of my friends in the food community. Think of the people who do the food trucks. You know, that are out of work. Tons of people are out of work right now. If we can just do our little part to help, maybe it'll just get through until everything gets back to normal, whenever that is. So that's my little editorial. And now I'm done. Let's have some fun. So tonight, I have two of my bestest buddies here, and uh, I'm gonna pop them up for you. There's my friend Vix Balo, rhymes with J Lo. And uh, my. Welcome. Hey, Vic. Welcome, everyone, in Facebook land. And Vic's even handsome when he's blurry. And then there's my friend Kristen Wilson. Hey. Hey, Kristen. And Kristen is uh, one of the uh, people. What is your title at Eight and Sand now? I always ask you this. Uh, yeah, it changes. Um, tasting room supervisor, lead server, den mother. Whatever Mazone tells me to do, you know, it's fine. And I have somebody, I'm texting my buddy Rob Callahan just to make sure they knows we're on. Uh, one of the exciting things we have is that uh, Kristen and Aaron Taylor from Bonesaw have recorded their first podcast. It's, can you tell them what it's called, Kristen? So the podcast is Beer Lady Group Chat, and it's me and Aaron from Bonesaw and any of our female industry partners, friends, what have you, just getting together and talking about really whatever we want and drinking some awesome beer while we do it. So, And how did this start? Tell us how Beer Lady Group Chat started. We've been working on this for a while and I've been yeah. begging Kristen to do something. So tell us I this, know. What, what this Beer Lady Group Chat thing is. So um, it started originally last year uh, when Alexis Deegan of the Brewers Association was trying to coordinate the first uh, Women's Brew Day. So there were a few of us that were in a group chat and it grew from there. And we were talking every single day, you know, industry or not. And it just, it blew up from there. Um, and we try to get together as much as we can, but we're kind of spread all over the state. I mean, we go, you know, we've got people from Twin Elephant and Sigmeister and then, uh, you know, we have forgotten in there and, you know, bone saw me. It's just, there's just a lot of us. I, uh, I always say this and I told, uh, I've told my Tara and Tara Nurin and anybody that wants to listen, all the women that run, women run the beer business. Guys, make no mistake about it. They run the beer business. They are the backbone of this industry and they do things that, you know, they brew beer, they sell beer, they serve the beer, they are legislating for beer. They're talking about beer, and it's just the coolest bunch of chicks that I know. And uh, it's great to see that an industry is so welcoming of, of the females. And I know there's a big Me Too movement in the brewery industry, and uh, Tara Nern did some great writing about that uh, mm -hmm. for Forbes. 
But uh, I think with the strength of the girls that we have here and just how cool they are and how, you know, how big of a part that you've all become, I think this is the perfect time to launch this podcast and you have some amazing guests lined up. Okay. Yeah, we're really excited. And um, <laughs> Tom Renzulli's uh, just commented, thank God Kristen is on here to bring some beauty to this. And that's awesome. <laughs> hey, Tom. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> and uh, I want to go over here to Vic real quick. So, Vic, do you know what today is? Today is, I don't know, is it a special anniversary? Today's a special anniversary. One year ago today, at about this time, we were sitting over in Atlantic City getting ready for Vic to, to be our uh, contestant, We Be Spelling. And uh, as you can see by the title screen here, Vic got up there. He was pretty confident, weren't you, Vic? I was going to take that whole <laughs> damn thing. And Brianna Betts won, by the way. Good job, Bri. Um, Vic spelled sauerkraut, as you see, in his name title down there. And didn't even know he did it. So uh, Vic Sauerkraut Sbalo rhymes with J-Lo. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, it's funny. I can't even see that on the screen. Oh, you'll be able to see it on It'll the It'll be recording. a treat for later. <laughs> oh, gee, I can hardly, I can hardly wait. <laughs> you'll be... I told you before, I'm on the cutting edge of spelling. You know, sometimes you got to do things a little differently. That's very That's nice. That's what but you do. The best part is that me and Tom and Kristen and all of us will never forget it. So don't worry about it. It's very good. That brings us to another point. You know what we'd be doing tonight if this was no coronavirus? We'd be at the beer tasting competition at Convention Hall tonight. And then going to We'd Be Spelling. Uh, and it's just, I'm saddened, but I'm happy in a way that- Wait, this know. week or is it next oh, week? Listen, one year ago, last year. Oh, yeah, last year. Next. Yeah, and then next week we would have been at the beer tasting. One year ago, we were at the beer tasting, uh, beer sampling competition, yeah. and then uh, we're, we'd be spelling. I think I, I just think that I'm happy that we got to push it to August with all the same bands and all the same stuff. Um, it is, uh, here you go, Rob Callahan. I do have beer, we'll talk about it in a minute. Um, it's uh, cool to see that's happening in August. We're hoping that things get better and, and you know make, keep making your plans to come down here. We're all going to need it. It'd be a big party. But uh, it was just funny. It popped up in my Facebook memories today, a picture of me and Chef Michael Brennan at the Weeby Spelling. And instantly, Tom and I both thought of sauerkraut. And that was how we uh, spent the morning uh, putting on Facebook. So. What, what is it saying? Friends like you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what have you guys been doing? I know, Kristen, you're still working. You have a job with Rowan and uh, you're vital. You're yeah. essential. I'm not essential. Um, <laughs> I mean, I like to think that I'm essential. So I work for Rowan College. Uh, so formerly Gloucester County College. Um, I mean, we're all working from home. So I have my laptop. I have access to everything I need. My office phone gets routed to my cell. So I'm here uh, to support students and, you know, any of my colleagues that need it. Um, but, yeah, it's it's been an adjustment. It's been different. But um, it's still technically extended spring break. So students are not really paying attention to their, their studies right now. They're really focused on everything else that's going on in the world. Yeah, it's um, a little crazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Vic, you're Kristen, working from home, too. Can I ask you about about eight and sand now yeah please when this came about that the tap rooms are being closed were, were you all prepared for this happening and had like a contingency in place um it kind of happened really quickly so we were open last weekend not this past weekend but the weekend before uh we were open you know the whole thursday friday saturday sunday i worked friday saturday and you know really quickly before we opened on Thursday, I got together an entire like enhanced cleaning schedule and Burke and Ingrid were getting together isopropyl alcohol and spray bottles so that we could do all this extra cleaning. Uh, we really kind of banded together super quickly and then we worked that whole weekend. Um, but we kind of knew it was coming. We felt that it was getting to that point um, and really getting the online store up and running and figuring out the curbside pickup to go that, I mean, Josh and Burke and Pete, Ingrid, I mean, they're, they were just working like crazy to get that together. So I haven't been in the tasting room, you know, for over a week or two, get it close to two weeks now. Um, but it's, so it's weird. <laughs> it feels weird not being there. Um, I had to, tell our staff, sorry, we don't need you right now, um, which 
was really sad because, you know, we're all close in some way. But, uh, I mean, we're still rocking it out. I mean, I'm, I've been so, like, flattered and honored that people are still coming and ordering our beer. I mean, the amount of beer that we went through last week, I was blown away. It's a, um, it's a really good community, and I think that it's nice that people are supporting each other in the way they yeah, can. Yeah, absolutely. And Josh, I think Josh is almost the face of this for you guys right now. I see him doing a lot yeah. of posts outside and stuff like that. He's really, really working hard. And, uh, mm-hmm. and you know, we had Rob on the other night. Like, when do you start brewing beer again? Like, when do you... Oh, they're brewing. You, it, they're brewing? Yeah, they place the Oh, yeah, place they're the brewing. Food. So... <laughs> yeah. Um, and tonight, I just wanted to show everybody, we are drinking. Well, so- shocker. And I got this... Uh, Something that's been sitting in my fridge wanting to try it. It's the Eight and Sand Locomotion. Uh, it's excellent. I know it's probably not available now, so sorry, Mazone and Burke. I didn't get you the sales thing, but like all of their beers, it's one of it's done really, really well. They really do a good job down there with the beer, and uh, you guys have a ton of different styles. Like how many how many taps do you have? Twenty taps? Uh, yeah, we have the capability for twenty taps. Um, so we have close to that every single time. So I think we're down. Um, a couple taps like right now because of everything going on but I mean they're still they're still brewing beer you know always always something new and interesting coming out of eight and sand too Mm -hmm. Um, lots of different styles uh, old styles you guys have uh, English milds and you know the hot pepper beers and the this and the one of my favorite South Jersey beers you know the metal winner yeah bad ombre which I love so much bad ombre and uh Keep your very innovative there and think out of the box. So as most of our breweries do, but I always have a special place for you guys because some of the beers you made is the first time I've ever had that style of beer. I mean, Burke and his, yeah, for his sure. stuff that comes out of there is pretty cool. Vic, what are you doing as the president of the Ocean County Home Brewers? Never an election. He stuffs the ballot box and uh, <laughs> wins all the time. But I mean, what are you guys doing for the home brewers? Are you guys doing anything now? Or Well, you know, our last meeting was on the 14th. It was at the... Uh, it was at Icarus, uh, and that's, you know, the last time we had it. We actually had a Hefeweizen competition, and uh, the winning beer is getting brewed at Icarus, hopefully this summer. And I know he's listening, but Gary Paxson was our winner of that. So we actually had him on our podcast, the last one, which will be out uh, eventually once we get it on the Basement Brewcast. We had Gary on there. So uh, as far as what we're going to be doing in... The future, I don't Our next meeting is scheduled for April 21st. I don't know if that's going to be happening, but Six in the Six feet apart, group, Vic. Huh? <laughs> what? Six, Six feet, feet apart. apart. Oh. Well, well that's going to be a, a pretty uh, pretty that- tough, uh, tough idea, Nancy. See, um, But what we're doing in the home brewer community, I think what this has an effect on having home brewers brew more. Um, I was talking to Guy Corrado, and he said last week was a fantastic week for him, sales-wise. You know, he's still, you know, you call an order, and he'll bring it out to the car, et cetera. But uh, myself, I brewed twice during this, and I hadn't brewed for three or four months before that. Um, and I know the other shops are still open. Uh, Eric at Fermented, he's actually shipping items out too so and he's doing a virtual cheese making thing i saw today yes. eric's doing out there and that's kind of cool so yeah. he's going to have a virtual cheese making class yeah. so that you know he teach how do they do everything fermented there you know and yeah. guy does more than just beer over there too he does some wine sure. and some stuff like that but it's cool that the community's trying to figure out ways to do stuff yeah um, and, and i think it's it's uh it's really giving someone else everyone's home you know i'm working from home also we're sheltered at home Uh, My wife is a teacher, so she's usually upstairs in the computer room working, and I'm downstairs in the kitchen. And the happiest people in the house are the cats, actually, because they're all home all day. I still I still get to go to work every day, and so does Tara. And you know, so it's kind of business as usual for me right now, working in healthcare. Well, not business as usual, but you know, I know I'm going to have to be at work. So uh, this is kind of a cool outlet. We were trying to figure out some way to get together and talk to people. And uh, maybe a half hour every couple of nights, just give them something to look at. I mean, it's not me and Vic they want to look at. We have Kristen here, so that's good for tonight. But when it's me and Definitely Tom, don't want to look at that's me. a problem. Tom, you know, that's know what how- me and Richard said when we were in. When we were at Cape May, we said we need someone to help us make us look better. Tom, Tom <laughs> hey, uh, Vic, Tom wants to know how the six foot six foot rule works when you're only five foot tall. 
Man. <laughs> I know, Tom. That's so oh, Tom. awful. Tom, oh, that's terrible. Tara, you hear them? No, you hear them, Tara? No, not at all. They, they're all running and hiding from me out here at this point. I've been home. I haven't been able to do anything all day so or, or on the weekend, so they're happy that when I get to leave. So Now, now th- let me – I want to – this beer I have here, usually when we do the podcast, we have a guest beer. Today would have been the open in the baseball season, so – um, Icarus and Heavy Reel, uh, Jason and Jeff actually did a collaboration brew, and it's called One Up, One Down. It's got a baseball theme. It's met, so that kind of, you know, they're cool guys, so I'll show it. Otherwise, I wouldn't because it's a Met thing. But uh, it's a double IPA, and it's very juicy and delicious, as you can see here. Yeah, I, we love their beers, and I, I, you know, we've been blessed in here down in South Jersey with all the people that are making, you know, the beer level beer bar has been raised incredibly here in South Jersey and New Jersey in general, um, and those two guys getting together to do that, it's pretty awesome. Um, and also, congratulations to Jeff; he just had his first baby. Oh, congratulations! Oh, very nice. All right, Jeff, congrats. Pretty, how soon before Jeff has the baby working at the brewery? I think he's working already. There probably already. Yeah. So the other thing that I, I kind of we kind of wanted to talk about, you know, what do you do as a what do you do as a beer person when your all your outlets are down and and you have nothing to do? Like there's no news, there's no this, there's no that. So every little kind of thing uh, that comes out, we're kind of latching onto. I think that's why this no brewery delivery thing got so crazy real quick. But there was a couple interesting things that came out today. A uh, craft beer and brewing is offering a hundred thousand dollars of free advertising uh, right now. They have, or they have an application online. You can fill it out, and they're picking twenty different beer-related businesses and giving them five thousand dollars worth of advertising. Uh, we know the Brewers Association associations lobbyists are actually out trying to help get uh, benefits and stuff like that for people in the brewing community and all the communities. So it's it's become a really really big. A uh, really big thing for the brewing community to step out and help. And the other thing that I really like is the synergy between the food people and the beer people. Um, how they're working together. Like, hey, you know, why you're over here at blah blah blah? Stop across the street and get a pizza here. I mean, helping mm-hmm. each other. And that's a really cool thing about the community. What uh, what do you guys? So my thing is, I'm afraid to get takeout. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm nuts. So last night we got our first takeout. What are you guys doing for food? I had to go grocery shop and I hadn't spent fifty dollars in a grocery store in twenty years. And we went out and we spent two hundred and thirteen dollars. I, I damn near had a heart attack. But what are you guys doing? Do you guys? I'm not. Well, I, we eat out six nights a week. What are you guys doing? Yeah, well, we find um, we're saving a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, mm-hmm. this we whole process. We, were. we we actually ordered food. We got our first delivery from Acme today. And when they start shopping for you, it's it's like a game show on your phone. You're trying to see, especially now where they're out of a lot of stuff. You know, we don't have Purdue chicken. We're replacing it with this chicken. And you got to go in and approve it. And, you know, we're replacing this with that. We don't have this. It's really, it, it's kind of makes shopping a little, a little bit more exciting, I guess. But <laughs> we need the excitement. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, like a, it's like a dumbed down version of supermarket sweep, I guess. <laughs> to run around the store. So the other thing that kind of is uh, hopeful for all of us is that we have all these events coming up this summer where everything that's booked and uh, with each milestone that passed the two weeks, the three weeks, the four weeks, I'm a little concerned as to when all these events are going to be taking place. Um, as somebody who works at a brewery, what do you guys do? Just You just kind of got to sit back and wait and see what happens, I guess. Yeah. That's literally all we're doing right now is just sitting back and waiting uh, till we know when it's safe and I mean, me personally, as a not brewery or a college employee, I think we have a long way to go. You know, this isn't going to be something that's going to be done by April or by Easter. I don't believe that. Yeah, I know. Um, but we can still kind of, you know, support everybody at the best that we can. Of course. Of so, course. I mean, it's just, it's just, I'm touching my face incessantly. And every time I do it, I think about it now that I'm touching my face. But I've gone through so much hand sanitizer. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. So hand sanitizer, craziness. So it's going to be an exciting conversation now. No, it is an exciting combination. So do you know who's making hand sanitizer right now for everybody in South Jersey? Little Water Distillery. I Other saw that. And Mark and all those guys out there, they're making uh, they're making hand sanitizer, and they're getting it out to first responders and healthcare workers and people that need it. And 
it's one of the most awesome things about this community. Little Water, you know, they they um, they are a big supporter of the beer community. Guy produce, you know, worked with Gary and Tara on their What's on Tap show, or I can't remember. Uh, uh, Thanks for all the beers, or I'm sorry, Gary and Tara, I just can't remember what it was called. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm older now. But uh, mm. they are at every beer event, every event we do, Guy's always around, Mark's around. Um, they do a lot of barrel age stuff. A lot of people, we just did a little show with Billy from Ludlum where they did the Polar Bear Porter age in the whiskey barrels. Um, they are really out and do a lot of stuff for this beer community. And now they're out there making hand sanitizer. So if you are looking for some locally distilled spirits and you happen to be in the Atlantic City area, give them a shot at Little Water. Um, they have some, uh, the White, White Cap Whiskey is really what, done well. Their vodka's done well. They have some cool gins over there. And it's local. And uh, they are, they support everyone when they can, and this is a big thing for them to do that. It's a lot of work and a lot of effort when they're doing this instead of making distilled spirits. So uh, kudos to you guys. Cheers. You know, that's one of the cool stories. I know other distilleries are doing it, but, but Little Water's in my backyard. And uh, I saw a guy the other day, they were trying to find places where they could buy empty plastic bottles and just so that they could put the stuff in there. And uh, so it's really, really cool. What else you guys seeing out there that's something different? Anything? Got a little little cool story. Um, well, there's you know a lot of the brewers are doing are, are doing fundraisers and other type of you know on a national basis for like uh, the beer tenders, waiters, bartenders, etc. All of these people who are out of work because of this being uh, closed down. I know Icarus is 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 involved with other half uh, from New York doing some kind of. Uh, collaboration brew which is actually like a you know an extended version of it I think New Belgium is doing something like that also on yeah. a national basis I just saw something from the other half thing where they're gonna have some big collaboration I just got yep. some some stuff on it today and I think that mm -hmm. that's pretty cool so you know once again it's a community that gives back I'm gonna plug a little thing that we support that is the uh, sea turtle rescue up there in orange um, it's a group that we uh, fell in love with. We have the turtle as our logo, and they depend on donations and from going into the zoo and people, you know, being able to give them money so that they can rescue these turtles. It's truly a labor of love. They relocated it from down here in South Jersey up there because that's where the space was where they could get these turtles and save the turtles. So if you have any means that you could do this, you know, to support them, they're still gonna keep working. The turtles aren't gonna stop beaching themselves. They're just not gonna stop being rescued. Um, go to SeaTurtleRescue.org. You can go to our website, you know, a dollar, two dollars. We adopted a sea turtle. Tiny Tim is ours. 30 bucks. We adopted him. And, he's uh, a little guy. He's a little. Did you get visitation? Well, I, I, thought, I think that if we really tried hard enough, they would let us bring him home for a little bit. But we don't really want him here. We want him to be where he's safe because... Uh, me riding a sea turtle in my pond is not going to go over big. <laughs> so, but if you have the means, and you know, some of us are still working, and if you have the means to support something more than you, know, that you would normally do, I know them. I know that they do a really, really good job, and they are they are really doing a labor of love to rescue these sea turtles. So that's my. Are they affiliated plug. with John? Are they affiliated with Turtleback Zoo yes. up there in Orange? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They are in, that's part of what they do. And the zoo, the donations to the zoo help them. And, uh, you know, there's no school class trips coming. There's nothing coming right now. So any help that you can get would be great. And it's one of those things I think it's overlooked a little bit um, because they're small and, you know, not everybody knows that they're sea turtles. I mean, I would suspect a lot of people don't realize that sea turtles do get beached here in New Jersey and in, the, in our, our region and, and they're there to help them. So. That's my little thing for that. I mean, I have a little soft spot in my heart for the turtles and uh, for the people who do that. So, anywho, all right. So, uh, Kristen, what are you looking for most forward to do when all this madness is over? What's your thing that you really want to do that you cannot wait to do? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, we have a vacation scheduled for May, Where's and I'm just hoping we get to go. Where are you going? We're going to Mexico, so we're not scheduled to leave until May 20th, okay. so I'm hoping that we have some time. Uh, the resort will have just reopened on the 15th of May, so because they're going to close down for a period of time as well so that they can clean and try and, you know, reduce the spread down there. Um, 
but I'm hoping that by the time May 20th rolls around, uh, we'll be able to actually take the vacation. So that's, cool. that's what I'm looking forward to. Hey, Vic, Tom's asking what the name of the beer is you're drinking again. This is called, it is called uh, One Up, One Down. One Up, One Down. Uh, Vic brought it in honor of baseball season. What are you looking forward to doing, Vic? I'm looking at a few things, actually. Well, first of all, you know, when we, when all of this craziness started, we had some great, uh, great shows set up, Richard and I did, with the Brewcast. Um, in addition to that, a couple of, a uh, few months, I got our first grandbaby is coming. Looking forward to that. Aww. Coming in early July. And hopefully by late to July, that's our trip down to the Virgin Islands. Uh, hopefully. And when Vic leaves, they're just called the islands. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Where's the drum? Where's the drum roll? So I have some. I can. I have applause. We can do that. Looking forward to all of that stuff. <laughs> I'm just I think I can do it too. To, I'm just looking forward to my normal Friday happy hour, and uh, uh, Mrs. Beer scene asked me tonight if we could call the bartender from there and have him come make her a drink because I can't do it right. So, <laughs> I, I, no, she wasn't joking. She's serious. I so, can imagine she's yeah, serious. She's, she's not kidding. So, Phil, we can't wait for you to get back. Chris, Billy, all you guys, we miss you guys down there at our local watering hole. The, we, we go to Tuckahoe Inn. You know why it's close to our house? Uh, Fun Bobby will stop by. Tom will stop by. We have people that stop by and we get home. We're in bed by 7 o'clock on Friday night. It's the best thing ever. I'm looking forward to getting a haircut. You know, my hair is a little long and <laughs> you know, I need to get that taken care of. So, uh, Vic, you have a couple shows coming up. Kristen, talk to, tell everybody where they can find Beer Lady Group Chat. Which, you're, you're on Instagram? We are on Instagram. I still haven't made the Facebook page. I guess I have enough time on my hands that I can make the <laughs> Facebook page now. Um, so it's Beer Lady Group Chat on Instagram, spelled all the way out. We've got a couple posts. We've posted a couple things. Um, and we recorded our first episode um, with Richard as our producer, which was hilarious. Um, it was Erin's first time doing anything like that. Um, but she did. She did great. I so, think she's going to be awesome. She's a she's a very nice, very nice girl and knows the business. And she has a radio voice. She, she does. does. She has a great radio voice. And it's cool. You guys, just when you guys are talking to each other, we can see how that's going to work very, very well. Like I knew that when I was doing the podcast, Vic is much better at it than I am. So I kind of stepped aside, and him and Richard have their own little thing. And even my son-in-law said he's like, "We love listening to Vic." I'm like, well, thanks, buddy. <laughs> so now it's you know, Vic owns that podcast. So what we're going to do with the, what we're going to do is we're going to release it as part of South Jersey Beer Scene Podcast in the beginning. And once we get to her, you know, her and Aaron rolling, we're going to spin that off, and they're going to have their own spot. But for right now, you go to, to uh, iTunes or Google or wherever you get your podcasts. And, and, you know, go to uh, South Jersey Beer Scene, the South Jersey Beer Scene podcast. We're nearing our 50th episode. Uh, plus, we have a bunch of video episodes that you can go to YouTube and see. Erin says, yay, first recording. So she's yay. up there. So hi, Erin. She listened to it today. Did she? We're very excited for it. I was very excited. For those of you who don't know, I, I met Kristen. I first started doing TV with Gary and Tara, and Kristen came on. And I I met her at our, our podcast and I saw a TV show and I like cornered her in the parking lot like a creep. <laughs> said, hey, you got to do something else. I mean, you're really, really good at this. And that was three years ago. Yeah. So three it's taken ago. this long to finally get something off the ground. And I mean, really, I think what got the ball rolling, got the ball rolling is, um, you know, becoming such close friends with Aaron and really finding somebody that I would be able to go back and forth with and have such a great relationship with, um, because your your co host is super important. It um, is. So I think once I figured out, oh yeah, Aaron's Aaron's my person. Uh, I mean, we're beer cousins after all. Um, <laughs> so it's it it went from there. It's awesome. Basically. And Richard said it was awesome. And uh, for Richard, the Rastafarian, James Rabbick, man of many names. He has so many names. He does. But, you know, I didn't even know his real name wasn't Richard till like a year ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so. It, we just have that. to get an intro together, John, and then yeah. we can okay. get it, get it together. <laughs> I've called good. him by about 20 different names. Yeah. You guys, but you guys get along. You, that's like, you're like father and son. I mean, it's kind of cool that way. 
father and ranting son. So, <laughs> all right, guys, it's getting close to eight. And I think uh, people probably had, I know they've had enough of me, probably not of you guys, but I know they've had enough of me. So, you know, when we were on the other night, we, uh, you know, our friend Rob Callahan, you know, I, I love Fun Bobby. You know, he's probably the guy I've known the longest out of everybody. We go back 30 years. And uh, I think the tagline everybody's using is brewery strong. So if everybody wants to raise their glass, you know, and for all of our friends out there that are struggling right now, we're just going to say, you know, brewery strong. We love you guys. Okay. And pretty soon we'll be able to do this in person. But for now, keep looking at us for Tuesday and Thursday night. Tuesday night, I have a couple people coming on. I don't want to talk about it yet, but look on Facebook. I know Adam Mazzola from... Uh, Summer Swelter is going to be on, and hopefully we have somebody else that's lined up, but I don't want to say it too soon uh, for fear that they won't come on. So, And you know who you are out there, so we'll talk about it tomorrow. So cheers, everybody. Stay safe, and we'll see you on Tuesday night. Make sure you check us out at sjbeerscene.com and check out our podcasts and our videos on YouTube. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers.